All right, I'm back. Pile number two. Excuse me. So pile number two, we have the cat, um, independence and healthy boundaries. We have the king, which is man, authority, male, sexual energy. Oh, sorry. Things pertaining to the law. Justice. Speaking of law, I got called for jury duty for the first time in California. Um, we have the raven, magic, coincidence, and synchronistic events. Looks like can't read backwards. And we have love. All right. So I actually really liked this pile. It was a very interesting reading, um, but it is not what you think it is. <laughs> it's never what we think it is, right? So the first card that I'm drawn to inside of this pile for pile number two is the cat. Now, for those of you who know, I have two cats, Mungo and Cheese, um, and they have a babysitter and they have their um, aunt Sarah watching them. Um, so they're fine. She sends me photos every day of them being cute. Um, so the cat is, some of you have people and a male, I, I, and I feel like I'm a male figure. Um, if this isn't a male figure, it's someone maybe who has a really strong, uh, masculine energy. Um, and I say masculine, maybe more yang energy because masculine feminine is definitely a Western concept. Um, but this is somebody who's pushing the envelope. They are pushing your buttons is what my guides are saying. They are doing things and again, to piss you off. And it's not just like, oh, pissing me off just by being themselves. These are people who they know what they're doing. They know what line they're encroaching on. <laughs> and for those who know a cat, <laughs> cats don't take anybody's shit. <laughs> cats, when they're done being pet, they're like, I'm done. Get up and walk away. Or they'll bite you like my old cat used to do. And so some of you are being um, tested because the universe is like, well, you're telling us you want blah, 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 qualities. But will you stick to your principles? Not your commitments, your principles. Will you stick to your guns? And you're being put in a situation where you're, you're, um, you're being challenged. You're, um, being challenged. And, um, they're not being challenged to punish you is they're actually saying is they're actually testing you to bless you. Because with the raven, is this is sort of the wake-up call. Have you ever walked by a flock of crows? I and mean, when they really see something, they will be like, ka, ka. They're really obnoxious. I use raven and crow interchangeably. Um, but here is what they're getting at is this boundary tester, or this boundary pusher, whoever this may be in your life, is teaching you how to say yes to yourself. By saying no to this person and being like, you know what? No, I don't want that. And this isn't just having to be a person. This can also be an organization or a company. Um, um, I should add as well is you're actually allowing the universe to make magic happen in your life. Um, when you're willing to say no to something and people are like, well, how can I do that? I don't know. I mean, I, how can I say no to that? It's like, you can't actually, you can say no at any point in time. Nobody owns you um, because this is an act of love. Some things with this pile for those who chose pile number two that I'm on <laughs> is, um, is some of you are, you're scared to say no. Not that you're scared to say no, you're a people pleaser. And some of you are not assertive. And I should say, you are not asserting yourself in this situation. I shouldn't say that you're not assertive. You are assertive, but you don't know how to assert yourself in this situation for fear of judgment. Because if I say no, then people are going to think I'm a bad person. And no, no, no. So I'm going to pull some clarifiers. The clarifiers are disruption, the clarifiers are mystery, and the clarifier is butterfly. And the next clarifier is goblin. So sometimes they have me pull from the deck that didn't get, oh no, they just fell on the floor. Okay, the deck that <laughs> of clarifiers. And the reason they're having me pull these is because when you say no, first of all, they're saying is the mystery, the backtrack, the mystery. We don't know how other people are going to react. We don't know what other people, how people are going to perceive us. If they, it's a mystery. We don't know. They might take it really well. They might not when we say no. There will, of course, be some level of disruption. Okay. And some, for those of you in this pile, you are empaths. And because you're empaths, when you tell somebody no, you feel their disappointment. You feel their hurt. You feel the letdown. You feel it. Um, and for some of you, the vibe that I'm getting here is they're recalling me back to my days in the classroom as a teaching assistant. And one of the things that um, a fellow teacher of mine said at, at a school, she's like, you know, I would take days off and take these mental health days they tell us to take. But the truth is, is that I feel guilty because if something goes wrong or something happens or you get overwhelmed, um, I would feel guilty that you were so overwhelmed and I wasn't here to help you. 
guilt is a very powerful tool for control. And I was like, you don't need to feel guilty for taking days for yourself. Like the world will turn. If an organization, um, any organization cannot figure up from down or their head from their ass, but just one person takes off for a day, it needs to be reorganized. (laughs) Okay. So that's not your responsibility to recreate the wheel. And they're saying is, yeah, it's probably going to cause some disruption. You're probably going to ruffle some feathers. And you know what? It's not your job to save the world, <laughs> okay? The, the doors will open. The lights will turn on regardless of whether or not you're there. And the beauty in this, the beauty in this is the love that you're having for yourself, okay? And you ask yourself in the situation is, what would love say? If love were a person and love had a mouth and love had ears, what would love say? Love would say, say no. Love would say, choose yourself. Love would say, speak your truth. Okay. So for those of you, this is definitely, some of you, this is a person, but for some of you, this is a, maybe an organization or a job um, or a company, you know, whichever way we want to rephrase that five different ways. And of course, they may respond with the kind of this goblin, which is the wounded human ego of like, well, you know, you've always said yes before. Why can't you do this? And nah, 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 nah. Um, I'm not saying they'll sound exactly like that, <laughs> but there will be some sort of like, well, you know, like, you know, we don't need you if you're not going to do this. And it's like, may- maybe you won't. But you know what? That's not, that's coming from ego. And the difference between love and ego is that you're going to have unconditional love for yourself. Okay. And self-love for yourself and making this, whatever this decision is, or at least maybe just kind of like that song pops up in my head by, um, oh God, who was it by? But baby, basically it goes back up off me. And actually, I think that's what the song is called is back up off me. I mean, might, might need to go listen to that to kind of hype yourself up or maybe listen to it to kind of keep yourself in alignment of I made the right decision for me. So again, this, um, this pile is about saying no and saying no as a form of self love. Okay. Um, and say, and knowing that, yes, this will cause disruption. This will piss people off. This will make people think, well, what are we going to do? And you're going to have to be, it's a mystery of their reaction. Um, the part of an empath is as an empath and highly sensitive person is we have to allow people their reactions. Okay. Our job is not to band-aid the reaction. We just speak our truth to obviously with kindness and compassion and, and directness to a degree. And there's a beauty in that. And the beauty is in that we relinquish how that person decides to respond to whatever it is that we're that we're trying to communicate. And there will be a transformation here. Okay. You may feel like you kind of want to cocoon, like, man, I feel like I got punched in the gut when they didn't, you know, take my response the right way or whatever. Um, You may feel hurt or disappointed, but they just want to emphasize there is a beauty here, okay? And that um, by saying no to whatever this is or whoever this is, you are saying yes to something else, okay? You are saying yes to your dream or saying yes or closer to what you actually want to be doing. You will not understand this today, okay? For some of you, you may be like, what? This might actually even be for some of you. Um, maybe not for another two years. And you may hold on to that bitterness and that resentment of saying no, I think particularly with a job or an organization for two years. But then after the two years, after you kind of look in your wounds for two years or whatever it may be, you don't have to, but if you were to, you'll see the beauty in the situation. Okay. So um, don't just bypass it. Uh, Really feel it. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay if people didn't respond the way that you wanted to. It's okay to feel disappointed by their response. You, you know, okay. So, um, recap here is again by saying yes to you, it will be mean saying no to other people, but saying no to other people also means saying yes to yourself and sticking to your guns. Okay. So, just think of that cat be like a cat. Um, some of you might even uh, see more cats, or you might have cat more cat videos popping up in your Instagram. <laughs> I keep seeing some of you like, where are all these cat videos coming from? Why is this here? It's because you did this. You you chose this pile. That's why. The universe is like, we're giving you the sign. (laughs) The cats. Um, We have feral cats here in my Maui. And my mother is part of the the initiative to get them all spayed and neutered. Um, 
in her neighborhood. So she is that person and she hates them. She, she really it has nothing to do with the kindness of her heart. It's everything to do with that. They're everywhere. They climb inside of her car. They climb on top of her roof. They meow. They fight at night. They're actually really funny. And actually, it's very funny to watch her uh, get so um, mad at them. Okay, so pile number three coming up next.